What's up, guys? I'm going to be discussing the 2019-2020 uh, uh, favorites to win the championship. Again, these are my opinions. Uh, my opinion, so I'm just going to be giving who I think will win and the reasons why um, and who has the best shot at it. So I'm going to name uh, two teams on each conference, one in the West and one and the other one in the East. So, yeah, with that being said, if you feel different and if you think I'm wrong, uh, feel free to let me know with a comment down below. So let's get into it. So let's start with number one, the obvious, the favorite title contenders, it's the Clippers. Why? Because you add Kawhi Leonard, a defensive player of the year, a guy who's proven to lock up uh, players like Kevin Durant, LeBron James, and, you know, players are like Janice Adetokounmpo. I'm not going to say lock up, let's not say lock up, but he has been known to slow down the opposing team's best player. Same thing with Paul George. You have Paul George, who, who's a two-way superstar, who, 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 a guy that can defend and score so you have two lethal threats and you add that to a team that took took the warriors to a six game series and yeah that that's pretty they, they're pretty dangerous with a team that has a former six man of the year a guy that's Montrez harrell who comes off the bench and can score so this team has every weapon to compete against any other team in the nba so for number two, I have the Lakers. Now the reason why I have the Lakers behind the Clippers is because of three, three of well, of many reasons why. Well, for number one, LeBron is aging. Now statistically, he's still putting up big numbers. He's still, you know, ha you know, he's still that guy. But LeBron is just so great that you don't really notice that much of a, dec a decline in his game. But uh, so but. Also, to mention, they also added guys like Danny Green. They also added guys like Troy Daniels, Jared Dudley, Avery Bradley. And so the reason why I'm mentioning is this is because I think it's chemistry. I think chemistry is going to be a huge part just because they added so many new pieces and so many new faces. And so they have limited time to, to you know, to get things going and to just have things click. Now, although they look good in the preseason debut against the Warriors, um, I still think there's still work to do. Now, if LeBron can stay healthy and Anthony Davis and Avery Bradley, who's had, who's, whose career has just dropped, who has, who's been injury prone practically the last few years, if, if they can stay healthy, I think this team has a good chance of beating the Clippers. Not only that, and because of the playoff experience, when you guys, ha when you have guys like Rajon Rondo, when you have guys like LeBron, when you have guys like JaVel McGee, Danny Green, people who have been to the finals, who have the experience to win, who knows what it takes to win. I, I think that's what ultimately what it comes down to. You got winners in uh, the Lakers, and I feel like that's what separates the Lakers from the Clippers. Now, although the the Clippers have a, may have a better roster, I I just still think with that veteran presence, with LeBron being at the end of his career, I think I don't know. There's more to more to it. Like they have they have more of a more of a hunger to win. And also, I think people are forgetting Kyle Kuzma. He's been flying under the radar here. He's a guy. Uh, that can score he's a third option and he is definitely still growing and so with that being said the Lakers have the perfect system around their two best players in Anthony Davis and LeBron guys that can shoot guys that can defend and guys that are ultimately have playoff experience and that is what is needed to win a championship so which is why I have them at number two and so number one on my list is the 76ers and now the reason why I have them though as the best team in the East the East has def definitely gotten weaker and with the addition of Al Horford it separates the 76ers and puts them above many other teams he's very underrated and not only that they re-signed Tobias Harris they got Josh Richardson and so with the addition of Al Horford he's a guy that can defend guys like Giannis Antetokounmpo and you know play he's a great defender give Joel Embiid the rest that is needed to uh to compete because Joel Embiid is usually injury prone so this is a great pickup for the 76ers and not only that they got Josh Richardson who is a great pickup for them because of JJ Redick he's a one-dimensional type of player and so that gives them another two-way player to the team and so let's talk about something else. My boy Ben Simmons finally making his first three. 
of his career. Dude, honestly, I'm so excited for the season to see the Philadelphia destroy other teams in the East. This team is really good. With Ben Simmons being able to shoot now, having more confidence, I think they're the team to be in the East. And I think this is very reasonable to, to, to think that they have the best chance in the East to, to win. So for number two, I have the Bucks. Now the reason why I have the Bucks in number two and number one, not number one, it was because they lost Malcolm Brogdon and Nikola Mirotic. Now I know they had the best record in the NBA and they made it far. They're a very good team still. They still have George Hill. They still have Brooke Lopez. They still have Bledsoe and Janice. But the thing is, now that teams like the Toronto Raptors exposed the Milwaukee Bucks offense, um, now they have weakness. They don't have. They're not surrounded by as many shooters and as not as many good players as they were before. So now this is the reason why I have them at number two. I think they're still uh, going to compete in the East. I think Janis is going to get better, but until Janis doesn't get that jump shot knocked down, until Janis doesn't get that number two player that he can really go to, um, I don't think they're the best team to. They're the team to win the championship in the East, or at least make the finals is what I'm trying to say. Um, I think that team is very limited. Not very limited, but I do think they're limited as to what they can do. I don't think they're the best team in the NBA. And so with that being said, we're now going to do the honorable mentions that I think are underdogs and that shouldn't be slept on or slept on, I meant. And so my underrated team here is the... Utah Jazz and the reasons why is, is that they added Mike Conley one of the most professional NBA players to live He he is a guy that, that can defend he can shoot uh, He is he is a great veteran for Donovan Mitchell so he can teach him the things that you know He still needs to learn. Um, I like Gobert. He's a good defender. They added uh, Bojan Bogdanovic so pieces that they needed to add success to their run to the playoff and so for the East I have the Indiana Pacers. Now the reason why I have them is because Victor Oladipo is returning him back and he's one of the major big pieces to that team. Not only is he a big piece, they did add Malcolm Brogdon, one guy I'm huge on. He's a very, this guy can do, can do it on both ends. And they did add Jeremy Lamb and TJ Warren. So the loss of Bogdanovich isn't really going to be felt in my opinion. And I feel like they have the options. They have the different options to score. So bonus is getting better. Turner is also getting a little better. And that, that's a team that I'm big on and that is going to be slept on, I feel.